Okay, so welcome to the second episode of Scumbag, the wonderful internet podcast about the terrible, shitty things that the internet has become. I'm Ed Zitron, I'm here with Felix. Hey everybody. And yes, today is really about the serious issue, it's about being serious, about serious things. Regardless of who you are, in any social media context, I mean just, you could be a joke person, you could be a political columnist who just has no idea what they're talking about, so a fair amount of them. It doesn't matter if you are known for writing jokes where you you, you preface the joke as we talked about with, uh, I am a duck for this tweet, or, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you pretend to make video games. It it, it doesn't even matter if even yesterday you wrote a weepy pastebin apology because you, uh, you asked Jen Kirkman or someone for feet pics. Your voice is needed. People know, they need to know what you think about racism. Do you approve or disapprove? What do you, what do, what do you think about abortion? If there's a mass shooting, I really want to hear from you. And that's what's amazing about it. And you've got people that I both respect and disrespect with intent who just, oh my God, just shut up about Bernie Sanders being the most, the most clear example I've seen in the last few months where it's just people who just like the vicious bernie bros have come for me and my children and a bernie bro the other day wheeled up to my car and my aged mother who can be killed with the middle finger he was given the middle finger and now she is dead as a result somehow of a bernie bro yeah the uh the the whole bernie bro thing is interesting it's You've gotten a lot of people's expertise, and it's interesting. It's in a year where uh, one candidate, all his support, like not all his supporters, but a group of his supporters are like going around on Twitter, like, I'm going to kill you, you kike. Uh, I'm going to genocide your whole family. And uh, the response from the experts that we're talking about is, I think the people that like Bernie Sanders are too rude. And it's just, it doesn't make... There was one today, and I don't want to call her out because she's friends with friends, but someone I know who is a game designer of sorts went on this big rant about Bernie Sanders fans today. It's like they're all on 4chan. And it's just, what? No, no, they're not. And it's just, oh, wait, no, no. I mean, it's just the people harassing me. They're from 4chan. You know, the popular anonymous social network. And it's just, okay... I get anecdotal samples do happen, but it doesn't make any sense to just just every single Bernie Sanders fan is immediate. Isn't that exactly what Trump wants to like d- declare all Mexicans as some sort of criminal? And well, let's be honest, all races that aren't white like that. It's that same kind of very blunt thinking that seems to be being applied to Bernie Sanders' voters. But this not being a political podcast, that it's just people saying this are just amazingly unqualified to do so. I see a high proportion of people who uh, are in the video game world really want to apply their acumen to politics. Uh, because as you know, what is more analogous to the world of politics than the world of video gaming? Well, it's it, it's just, I was just thinking that, you know, EverQuest is really similar in its political structure to Saudi Arabia. No, I'm kidding. But it's, it's, it's wonderful. Well, it's not wonderful, the events that happen, say, the horrifying sh- mass shootings that happen, I think, every 20 minutes in America now. And then when you see people, the joke makers, so I'm in the Navy for this tweet, I am... I'm at the proctologist. The proctologist is my ex-girlfriend. Uh, the, the proctologist is also on the moon. I am wearing a shirt. Don't mention you like Space Jam. Wait, wait, wait. No. I can't make this joke today. It's too serious. Let's let's just... Just just listen, everyone. I have some points. Fav Star might be in the bio, but my heart's in the right place. <laughs> and it's just those people are just... Oh, They're the God most Christ. cynical motherfuckers on Earth. It's all the guys who write the write the fucking, uh, I guess I don't know. I guess you would call them long form jokes because there's a lot of setup and uh, screen direction. But all those guys, all the guys who are like, uh, oh, 
OnStar. I thought you said Open Bar. Those <laughs> those guys, whenever more than three people die in a mass shooting, not like in you know an inner city shooting, they don't care about that. No. But you know, a <laughs> mass shooting, they they go, Jesus Christ, I, sh- I can't fucking make jokes today. People, Jesus Christ, just be nice to each other. If you're thinking about killing somebody, don't kill them. Call a hotline. Like anyone who's about to do a mass shooting is following Vape Dad 420 on Twitter. No. <laughs> uh, they, I mean, you can almost see the wheels turning in these guys' head where, you know, they have a really great one. They have a really topical one. Like, hey, you know what? This one, it's not going to withstand the test of time. It's not going to be like breakdancing cop or any of those, but, uh, it's, you know, I'm going to catch that wave, and that's that's the path to at midnight. And, oh, my God, Jesus fucking Christ, did, did man open fire at a college? Well, okay, now I have to put it off all till tomorrow, and then it's not topical anymore. Thanks a lot, you fucking asshole. Okay, but I have to say something. I have to say something. I have to say something. Uh, oh, holy fuck, Kate, it's Kayla Tweets is tweeting about it. She just followed me. She just followed me. She's going to be pay, paying extra attention. Oh, my God. Okay, profound, profound. I have to go profound. Uh <laughs> Jesus Christ, why does this keep happening? Send. Yeah, just, and and nailed it. Just, I love that as well that you have it in your head, that the, the kind of pattern that these people clearly go through to think it's like, okay, well, I got my followers. And, and I could imagine one of them impotently like slamming their fist down or maybe just internalizing this because none of them have real emotions where they're like, ah, oh, God damn it, I had a really good one about me you know, I, I, I talk to a girl and I'm on a date and the date's in Nebraska and I'm like, this is corny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I, I had a really wacky scenario where uh, I was actually a dog. And it's all gone to shit. <laughs> the, the, it, but it gets worse as well with these, with the, because you can split them into a few different sections, but it's usually celebrity deaths and some sort of mass shooting or where they usually come out of the woodwork. And... I swear to God, whoever you are, Johnny Sum, if you're listening to this, I hate you so much. I mean, I despise everything you do. Every time I see your tweets, I feel unhappier. And you, and people like Johnny Sum. So, that's me done speaking directly to Johnny Sum, clearly listening. And I just, I hate them when they say we all need to be nicer to each other. You think the San Bernardino shooters were like, would like read Twitter and be like, oh, fuck, Really? Oh, I should, I should, you know what? I, I'm going to just, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go give back this felony gun that I have. I mean, it's horribly illegal. I'm just, I might turn myself in. Maybe I'll just turn my life around though, you know. I just, I just might, might get a new job. It is, it is the most cynical way of thinking and it's the most sort of chauvinistic way of thinking where you think that a mass shooting, someone who would do a mass killing, would, you can appeal to their rational mind and not even appeal to their rational mind. Just give them a very... <laughs> it's, you know, these people always give long screeds about mental health. You can't tell somebody who's depressed just to feel better. Yeah, no shit. No one fucking thinks that. But the same thing. The same people go. They think they can tell somebody who's uh, made the decision to kill all these people. Hey, uh, why don't you do the opposite thing? Like, that's going to work. You're not fucking Jesse Custer. You can't command people to do anything. You can't even command these girls to give you nudes. That's the whole reason you're on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, the whole plan is failing you already. And you mentioned depression. I mean, that that when Robin Williams died, that was it was, it was a very it was a very sad situation, obviously. And it was so it was truly a, a, a sad thing that did bring some attention to good issues for like three minutes, and. It was just this amazing... I, I did see, and I'm not I'm not invincible to this. I did a rant about like depression and how it's a good thing, but I didn't do it with the intention of getting followers or getting anyone to pay attention to me. I just kind of wanted to get off my chest because it was just bothering me. Did you really do it, it not my, to get followers? Because you, you have significantly more than me and it's kind of fucked up. I mean, no. If I was... Why would I do that? I, I, but I, I guess that I don't think in the kind of reptilian way that some of these people think. But they always, when it comes to depression, it's just like if they always say the same fucking thing. It's never about real experience. It's always, okay, I know I usually tell jokes, but you know, I really... I suffer from depression too. 
and humor is how I deal with my depression. My depression, my depression, my, me, my, retweet, please. And it's always got, without fail, let's say, probably not 100% of them, let's go with a strong 50 to 60% of them will be like, the suicide hotline is this. Because, you know, if you're suicidal, you're reading that, I... I just don't think that reading an internet jokester saying that is going to turn your life around. I can't imagine. I mean, uh, someone once likened, uh, once saw someone liken uh, suicidal ideation and willful suicidal ideation as uh, feeling like you're on fire and only one thing can put you out. Uh, I, I, I can't say that a guy that you saw less than two hours ago have a lengthy argument about who originated the joke format of pretending to be a robot <laughs> is going to will you away from that. You, you, you would probably need some capacity of professional help, but you know what? This is not about you. <laughs> this is about the jokester showing his new dimension. Maybe he's going to people, all these girls is followed or all these uh, screenwriters or whoever is trying to impress will go, Wow. I never saw that side of you. Um, if you would like to write a thing and say, hey, I wrote a thing about depression, by all means, and they will collect their $300 and pass go, and you're probably still going to feel like shit. Maybe even worse because this event has transpired, but again, not about you. Selfish. And that's the amazing thing with, like, with all of these people is they're all, and I always get very depressed when I see someone have like a Patreon, I know Chapo has one, but it's not the same thing. A Patreon in their account where it's like for making jokes or they get a book deal, some sort of horrible book deal. Every single account I have followed that has had any kind of interesting joke, something that I repeatedly find funny that is dedicated to this subject, such as whatever tweet bot it is that combines whatever shit, I don't know. The ones that combine, the, the bots that always, always come back to a cash.me link, a PayPal link, a Patreon. And it's like, you know what? No, I'm sorry. You spend your worthless existence on Twitter making fucking jokes. You will die poor. Like, like you will die alone and penniless if I have anything to do with it. Okay, that's a little bit much, but still. No, I was just going to issue physical death threats to them. Uh, uh, let, me, let me mitigate this. Yes, uh, I mean, the kind of hypocritical for me to go after this in total after all chapo does have a pretty well-paying patreon we in fact uh formed our llc today uh not in america in panama i heard that's where you're supposed to do it but uh you know we do we do give the people something extra and also i will nakedly tell you i want to have money i don't have a fucking bed frame i'm like a twitter thought i just bought, bought my second pair of pants today that don't have a hole in the crotch so yeah i'm not gonna say this is you know, I'm, I'm doing some groundbreaking shit for all you people. But, uh, hey, you enjoy it. I'll do something extra. And uh, maybe my dick won't fall out of my pants next time that I leave the house on a tri-weekly basis. At least not deliberately. Not deliberately. I will pull it out to make a point, though. You know, sometimes <laughs> you have to show people. But, um, yeah, no, there's there's a big thing of uh, give me money for continuing to do what I'm going to – what I am doing and would do regardless if I got money or not. But hey, shit, man, if you can squeeze him, God bless you. I actually, God does not bless you. There is no God <laughs> for you. God God has cut you out. But I found one from John, Johnny Sun. Worthless human Johnny Sun. White man apologizes for, shoot, apologizes for shooting lion. Quote, to be honest, I just wanted to shoot anything that was African. Oh, thank God oh, for the social God. commentary, you typo-making shit stain i was thinking about being racist but then i saw the account that pretends to be the alien with developmental disabilities <laughs> talked about the white guy being racist and i'm like well if he's against it i think i'm gonna cut it out not paying my yeah. membership dues to the aryan brotherhood this month i'm selling my metal militia shirts and i'm going i'm, I'm going straight those those aren't racist those aren't the racist mma shirts those are holes your Reich, which are now banned. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll tell. Very sorry. Uh, looks like I have to give you a private lesson about racist T-shirts, Mister. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I'm going. I'm going to look forward to that as well because I, I, I love 
I love just knowing about the terrible parts of the internet. And I have to say, this podcast will never, ever involve me going on Stormfront because I'm not going to dig into racist internet. I just can't do it. And also, like, you can just use my account if you want to do it there. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. I'll tell you what's there. I I just found, actually, something worse than John Lee Sum's tweets. His Instagram, which is just his screenshots of his tweets, such as... The the wonderful inventor of bagels. I've got an idea that is significantly worse than donuts. What the? What it's the, different. It's what different you, shit, you asshole. The, try putting fucking <laughs> locks on a donut, you dick. Oh, this makes me. I don't really usually get mad at him. I'm just like, oh, that's kind of a hack joke, but people seem to enjoy it. And now I fucking hate him. They, oh, oh, the fucking pizza is a the, the fucking cracker that sucks. Fuck you, they're different things. And wait, but there's it if you if you weren't mad before, you will be now. If you're feeling lost, try to remember the last place you saw yourself as the person you wanted to be. What the <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. What I mean it. Like what do, I don't even know what I want to be other than drunk, laid and Oh, drunk, laid and paid. Fuck, I sound like a big dog t shirt. <laughs> well, yeah, I was about to Oh wow, is Lemmy from Motorhead has been reincarnated into Ed. <laughs> We're very similar. <laughs> You're a fame star guy now, but, but you're an older fame star guy. <laughs> I'm big dog fame star. But yeah. there's another one. If anyone tells you, and this is all horribly mistyped and just fuck. If anyone tells you every day is a gift, that's why it's called the president. Just say every day begins in sadness. That's why it's called morning. I mean, fuck off. Just no. Wait, wait. Just what, no. what is his, like, because most of the time it's inspiring. It's like, uh, it's like a child is walking around a field and he sees the sun and he says... I don't ever want to say goodbye to you. And the son says, you don't have to say goodbye if you close your eyes and love your parents. <laughs> it's a bullshit like that. In, in, and people are, If I made that tweet, I'd probably just say, the son looks down at you and says, ah, fuck off. My, my, mine would be, uh, be a little more complex humor, unlike Johnny. Uh, the son would say, uh, my dick fell off. And the kid would go, I'm liquid snake. <laughs> And then some obtuse reference to Turkish politics. Uh, I do remember one of my favorite, going slightly off topic, one of the, my favorite names you gave yourself on Twitter for a while, my dick don't work. For some reason, that was just one of the funniest things to see. In a feed of mine, which is like journal, mostly journalists, friends of mine, it'd be like, guy, 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 my dick don't work, guy, guy, my dick don't work. <laughs> I and, uh, There's something magical about I that. I can't take credit for that. That was just, I don't know who started that, that whole thing. I like it though. Benedict, Benedict Evans at the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Dick rolled up like a rug. <laughs> uh, I got. I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, um, I'm afraid it, it 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 just doesn't work. It 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 lays there like a tapeworm. <laughs> when I want it to be hard, it's not hard. Uh, but that is I, our I've problems tried. do not end there. In fact, there's a great deal of leaking. <laughs> <laughs> like a disused fridge. <laughs> His dick is leaking Freon. <laughs> That's innovation. Yeah, yeah, it's just like the Saudi Arabian Uber. <laughs> exact. It's exactly like that. that. That is the most accurate description ever. But there's also one of my favorite ones that leads on naturally from this, which is, and within my liner notes, John Hamm destroys misogynist. John Oliver kicks the shit out of... Republican idea. I don't know. It's always someone going like real talk, and then it's always someone famous or somehow famous, famous enough, or it's John a John Oliver clip of him being like, "I'm John Oliver, and this time I'm gonna say thing is bad." Oh, that's the worst. I mean, hey, John Oliver is a really, really, really great comedian. There's great writing on the he's show. Actually great, but I think it's more people's react like. Yeah, he's he's a fucking TV performer, and he's going to say, like, things that people wrote for him and he wrote about a subject. But, like, it's not the end of that subject. Like, it does John Oliver finally obliterates Donald Trump. Donald Trump has a, like, coin, cho- coin toss chance of winning the presidency at this point. It could change. We have a long, long ways to go before the, uh, before voting day. But, uh, fucking Christ, I don't think that did it. I don't think John Oliver... Ended uh, transphobia or <laughs> student loan debt or uh, ISIS or any of that stuff. You can just say like, "Hey, this is very good." You don't, you, you know, 
we're, we're drawing back to a little, a little of the stuff we talked about on the first episode, but there is a propensity with people to just find meaning and, hey, fuck, man, if John Oliver ended Donald Trump, well, then, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about up there. I'm about, like, you know, I'm a fave star joker. I'm around his level. I could end some things, too. I'm also in a holy moral struggle. struggle. No, he's a fucking entertainer, man. Yeah, and it's really weird how often this is happening. It's as if... Not not that every political columnist is right, not that every national news reporter is correct, but I'd, I'd want their opinion, and I believe that they would have a greater chance of causing real change than a piece from whoever it is, whichever famous person has nutted up to have their secretary write a ghostwriter who will then write a piece that then will not be read by the place publicizing, publicizing it, just assuming it's George Clooney. Just, that's that's the thing. It's always one of these goddamn actors, which is fine. It's fine to have some some of these people, like Kevin Spacey when he went up, uh, Cans, I think, Can, I, I'm not cultured. He went up on stage, he made a joke about Trump, and he was just like, oh, goodness me, why are you reporting this like it's actually, it's like destroys Trump in like one sentence. It doesn't, do, Donald Trump probably has no idea. He has no, no idea, idea that it happened, happened, and also like, more importantly, to the point they're trying to get at, uh, Trump supporters. Like, could you think of something that would, like, animate Trump supporters more in favor of him? Like, a fucking actor goes up at a film festival in France and tells a joke about the guy they like? Yeah, that's really going to fucking turn him. Someone who is undecided, someone who is may have had a propensity to go for Trump. Like, oh, what? Did this guy at this fucking exclusive film festival where all these actors slam poppers and fuck each other and put on masks in this, <laughs> the exact type of world that I hate that makes me, is making me consider voting for Trump? Oh, he's against him? Oh, okay. Like, no, they, like, this, all this shit. Hey, shit, man, all the shit I do. Fucking, this is what Chapo is. We're we're reifying views and repackaging them and making them entertaining in a way. Maybe maybe making you think a little bit. Not not the stuff I say, more the stuff that Matt Matt and Will say. But it, it's but really like if you're you're listening, you're you're ninety five percent, ninety nine percent chance you're already on board. It's just something you can enjoy. The only I don't I'm never gonna it's never gonna change anyone's mind. It's. The only thing that I hear where I'm like, oh, we're doing something good is when people are like, oh, this gets me through my day at work. And that's cool. But we're none of this is that important where we're changing people's mind. It's fucking entertainment. And the most absolutely eye-rollingly painful one I saw is Mike News. And I have friends who work there. I do. I I'm do sorry, too. guys, if you're listening. And I'm, I'm sorry for your friends as well. But... I want to read you a headline that made me want to throw my fucking computer in a volcano than myself in after it. St. Ryan Gosling says women are stronger than men. Fucking fuck. Shit. Just of all the pandering nonsense. Why? Guess what? Ryan Gosling probably went out there, thought, eh, yeah, women are stronger than men. Maybe he believes it. Maybe he doesn't. I'm not Ryan Gosling. I'm actually pretty much the opposite. And you're you're a brunette, just, first of all. I think that's the yeah, biggest difference between both of you. I'm terrifyingly large and ugly, so like pretty much the opposite. But it's it's he said, and the only quote is, "I think women are better than men." Gosling told the Standard, referring to the British newspaper, the Evening Standard. They are stronger, more evolved. You can tell, especially when you have daughters and you see their early stages. They are just leaps and bounds beyond boys immediately. And okay. Okay, fine. Like, that is... Being in public relations, I can clearly spot when someone has said... Someone said to the bloke, why don't you say something vaguely feminist? And then... This happens. This ha the, the, it, and it's And it's... On one hand, it is just horrifyingly obvious what he was doing, and fine, whatever, it's good. If it means that one man doesn't actually rape a woman... That's wonderful and absolutely beautiful, but it probably won't. It probably, but the people reading Mike News are already, well, actually, let's be honest, there are probably a few male feminists on there who their entire existence is just trying to shag ladies on Twitter. But there is, 
there is just something about this where it's like, that's the person you're looking up to. That's the person you are talking about. That's the person you're giving attention to. And Mike's pretty cut. They'll cover multiple people and they'll say, oh, yes, these people are also doing good things with feminism and all that. But goodness gracious me, they have a Ryan Gosling tag and it's pretty commonplace. They'll actually write something. And people will post this shit and be like, oh, look, Ryan Gosling's the greatest male feminist. Oh, my God. It's like, first of all, who gives a shit about male feminists just in general? And second of all, who gives a shit about Ryan Gosling being one? Now there's a fusion article, Ryan Gosling is ruining feminism for the rest of us. It's just this Ouroboroian, Salo-style, human centipede shit fest that keeps, I keep seeing on my fucking feed. And it's like, it's not helping anyone. All it is, is about Ryan Gosling. The only thing that people are going to remember is Ryan Gosling is kind of good. It's not helping woman. Nah, it sure as shit isn't. And, I mean, what, what he said, it was, you know, I've got friends that have kids. And it's, you know, it's a remark that they made. It's a, again, I don't know fucking shit about childhood development or biology. But people often remark that girls often develop intellectually and other shit. Like, uh, dexterity, motor skills, fuck, I don't know, man. On the quicker rate than boys do. This is a thing that people talk about. And I think it was just Ryan Gosling being like, oh, my daughters are fucking doing this quick. Okay, whatever. Yeah, he's talking about his kids. But because, right, we live in a culture, a consumptive culture where we ascribe every... We ascribe every actor, we make them a saint or, or, or cardinal. We make them... A member of this uh, this fake state that we've made up, we have to talk about this. We have to write out articles and counter articles to the point where we're fucking sick, and no one should care. No one should care that much. What does Ryan Gosling? What what, what is he wrong and right about with feminism? No one gives a fuck, and it's not going to affect your life. No one is going to be or not be a feminist because of Ryan Gosling. I don't give a shit how fucking famous he is. Because most people who are making a conscious decision in their belief system, they're going to do it based on factors in their own life, their own experiences. They're not going to do it because of celebrity endorsements, because you're, for as much of a fucking consumptive culture we have, you're not selling a fucking product. But you, the, the people who propagate this do believe that all belief systems are just products that aren't physically tangible and don't have an exact price tag on them. And I think that posting these articles and the places receiving these articles and the places talking about these things, I think that they are... I don't know if I blame them for it. They are jumping on a bandwagon of people. Like we said last episode, people are just looking for meaning. They're just looking for meaning in their sad lives and trying to remember the last time they were happy. And the, and it does go back to the the guys who want to seem like they're a good ally or whatever, tweeting this out. But it depends as well on the subject. I mean, there are a lot of these people, gun, we've talked about guns, you and I in private, gun things, whenever gun shit happens, whenever there is a mass shooting or someone shoots someone, there's always two or three people going back and forth, which is fine, and they're correct, saying this guy's a terrorist, they're not saying it's a terrorist. You're not going to change it, but I, I can't judge someone for being angry about that. What I can judge them for is when they make statements on things that they just don't understand, gun violence being one of them, and I actually will probably need your help understanding one particular Twitter war in a second, but when it comes to gun stuff as well, when it comes to gun law, it's just amazing how poorly educated people are, and yet how often they talk about it. It's just ban all guns. Okay, cool, sure. How? Okay, uh, a buyback. Okay, cool. So let's just assume everyone will agree to that. So is the buyback going to be dollar for dollar what you pay for it? How are you going to prove that? Is it just going to be, is it an AR-15? It's $300. And then it's like, well, the reason that people have it, have guns, is because they've got small peepees. Or, you know, it's because they just want to feel tough. And, you know, these are the reasons that people know. A lot of people have guns because it's considered a civil right. It's their civil right. For wrong or right, that's what they believe in this country. Yeah, no, and um, I mean, Christ Almighty, like the gun thing is a complex issue. It's a part of our national character, and per capita, we own a shitload of guns. Uh, the the actual way 
means of controlling firearms, first of all, all the solutions are fantastical. For the diehards, they're not going to sell their guns back. They're not going to participate in a, di- in a buyback program. And it's fantastical anyway. It's a fantastical concept. Uh, second of all, banning production, which w- would never fucking happen at all. We still we no. still make we still make cigarettes and all types of awful shit. We make oxycotton. It's uh, one one of the you know you could talk to a larger issue about lobbying and money and politics, but none of these people. That's not a, a sexy of a moral issue. Uh, even then, there are millions upon millions upon millions of guns owned by millions and millions and millions of Americans. The the well, you know, the, there's already poison in the well. You're not going to get rid of those guns. So they don't they they don't have any policy interest really. They just it's an easy moral thing to be like, guns bad, fucking small dick, blah blah blah. And they also, I mean, they live in places that do have gun control laws. And yes, gun control laws in urban centers are mitigated by surrounding states that don't have gun control laws. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from Chicago. Chicago has very strict gun control laws. Uh, there are a shitload of shootings in Chicago. It's not as bad as it was a couple of years ago, but it's pretty fucking bad because you can, you can buy guns in Kentucky, uh, Indiana, especially it, it's, you know, it's a very complex issue. It would, take some level of a federal solution, but it would also take a policy solution that isn't necessarily focused on guns. It would have to be focused on cro- uh, on poverty, systemic racism. But because it's easier to... The trend now for adults is to somehow display your own weakness, to plug your ears and eyes and go, bad, just end it. That we don't have these discussions. Well, one of my favorite ones in this in this subject was... The it was boing boing posting a, a what I assume you could call an article from back channel so mediums whatever I don't know what it is talking about why and this is the quote why isn't Silicon Valley trying to fix the gun problem well first of all why should Silicon Valley fix it why specifically them when they are the California as a state is not somewhere where guns are commonly manufactured due to California's gun laws. So just let's start off with your complete wrong question. And then there's like, there's no data. Tech investors are data-driven bunch. That's number one. There's number two. There's too much shouting. Tech investors prefer to stand above the partisan fray. Yeah, famously, famously apolitical group, tech people. And then three, there's just no natural constituency. Tech entrepreneurs and investors flock most avidly to ideas that meet their own needs. They like to scratch their own itches and dog food their products. The true see, the true reason, and this this endless just dog shit read from back channel from a dude whose name I won't mention because I don't like lynching anyone. Covering the web since 1994, back channel contributor blogging at wordyard.com. Thank God this guy is the one. And and this piece is informed certainly based on um, tech. He certainly does not mention many, if any, actual manufacturers of the most popular weapons. And it ultimately comes down to the fact that it's a cultural issue. And smart tech for guns could get policemen killed. Could get military people killed. Who is it going to be applied for? It's just this massive issue. And Silicon Valley people always jump in and say, just ban guns. Just do it. Yeah, you yes, you mindless fucks. Why don't we also ban the people who are effectively underinsuring every member of their company? So Uber. Yeah. Most of their most of their people aren't insured properly. Airbnb, most of the houses aren't properly insured. And I mean they, they, there's a actual thing happening there, possibly conspiracy for fraud. To fraud even. And it's just, no, let's talk about the gun problem because it's so inherently within a liberal state. And I'd consider myself a moderate. I don't want to make this liberal or liberal or conservative or whatever. I don't know. But it really comes down to these people are in a liberal place. So it's like ban all guns. It's like, you know, what? it'd be actually not that I'd be the happiest person to just hand over things I'd paid money for. I, You know what? If they were all banned, eh, I don't know if I'd be the maddest person. I don't. I, I also see both sides. It's just that Silicon Valley is a great example. Put the joke man aside. 
of people who should not be discussing issues, trying to talk about them in a way using some imagined intelligence. No, yeah, that's, um, it's exactly it. And I think they, people flock to this issue because it, nine times out of ten, they, they, People flock to issues where they know there is no solution that will be enacted. They know that there is no policy that will happen because, you know, various factors of political gridlock, lobbying, no public will for it. But they're easy moral stance to take. But, hey, if a policy goes into effect and it either doesn't work or if it causes the opposite effect and exacerbates the problem... Uh, they they could be held accountable for it. But because no policy will be put in place, they'll never have to hold account to anything. They'll never have to answer for their shitty position. So uh, this is a very attractive position to people like this. This is a very attractive set of issues to people like this. They get very upset when you bring up actual evidence as well because the bullet buttons that you'll find on, say, an AR-15, so that's just for, for us readers who do not... Readers, listeners, sorry, everyone, who do not have or have been around guns there's a thing in california called a bullet button i think it's called that because you can use the tip of a bullet to eject the magazine now this was one of these guns that had a bullet button was used in the san bernardino shooting so there is legislation that says they want to eradicate it saying you have to open the action of the gun i believe just on ar-15s i may be wrong but nevertheless when i brought this up with someone and they were like, oh, it's such a good idea. It's such a good idea. I told them, yeah, they've already... The gun industry and people on the internet who have guns are so much better organized than you that they have already come up with a solution for legislation that will at the earliest go into play 2018, if it even happens at all. And on top of that, guess what? People who are going to do terrorism generally don't check in with their local police officer to make sure they have a legal gun. It's not impossible to find a legal AR-15 with a completely removable magazine or shit just get a 22 rifle they the, there are tons of those with just removable magazines so when i brought that argument to someone they sat there in complete silence with no ability to argue back and i actually said i said anything and it was a silicon valley venture capitalist type and i felt bad i wasn't even mean i was just like that there is no good solution these are stopgap issues so stopgap solutions that will ultimately do nothing other than impede people who have guns legally, which I don't really care about, other than it being slightly annoying to some people. But it won't stop terrorists, again, they, they, or anyone who's doing a mass shooting. And it's it's just they probably planned it. Even if they have a bullet button, they've probably got a little tool to stick into it. Or they've illegally modified it like tons of people do. Go on calguns.net. There are tons of people doing this crap. Yeah, no, um, but they know this will never be put in place. As you, you, you first described, uh, the gun the, the gun lobby is so much better organized. And the gun lobby is not really indicative of all gun owners. The NRA subscribes to a very far-right view of the world that is not necessarily indicative of all gun owners. There's a really, really good article about gun control and sort of the the way that the NRA and uh, more uh, morally uh, performative people both get it wrong that I, I think we should link to in the episode description when we put this up yeah. by Mark Cooper. But, uh, I mean, also, yeah, it's very easy to circumvent. And people, if you have the will to circumvent something like that, you'll do it. If you have the will to go and fucking kill people... You're going to do it. You're not going to, you know, the, the people, the people who attacked the airport in Belgium, I don't think that they saw the little sign on the door that had a, a picture of a gun with a circle around it crossed out and said, ah, well, we got to attack another, another airport, one that does not have this safety standard. God, I hope they don't have these <laughs> in every airport. Yeah. And, you know, again, when we, okay, let's bring up this problem of terrorism, uh, that whole thing, that, that what happened in Belgium or what happened in France, these are there are some really fucking complex routes, and the answers to them, the policy answers to them, aren't very sexy. They take a very long time, and they involve a level level of cultural change that happens over time. 
and it's not easy to make a moral stand. You have to make a very a multifaceted argument in favor of what you want to do and a multi, multi-layered policy solution. But none of that's sexy. You can't put that in 140 characters no. and go, dude, get rid of it. And when it comes to Silicon Valley, people talk about anything, guns, policy, whatever, any kind of policy. It's great in that they have this kind of three-year, two-year idea like that it has to be done quickly so that we can stop this forever and then when one thing happens to move in the right direction they get furious they're like nothing's happening we in tech need to do this we need new leadership the truth is politics moves quite slowly the government moves incredibly slowly it's just how things work in the real world and i realize your venture capitalists can shove 50 million bucks up your anus but that doesn't actually fix Real, gu- you could give fifty million dollars to. I don't know. You can actually give it to the treasury. I believe they wouldn't change anything. Nobody would change. It. You can lobby your ass off, but it's not the Senate, Congress. Everything moves much slower than people believe, and things have to be done in steps. And they don't understand it. And it's actually really entertaining watching them try to without doing. I have four people I know who have brought up gun violence in conversation over drinks with a bunch of people, and I've said to them something very simple. Do you know how to buy a gun in California? And they said, no, why would I? I'd never buy a gun. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. But do you know what Dross is? No, no, I don't know how to buy guns. It's dealer record of sale. It's how you buy one. Very basic things you probably should know if you're going to talk about the subject are how someone gets one. Now, you could just probably, if you were a really intelligent person who can do basic math and understand states, you could just have residents in Nevada where there is no registry, go buy a gun there using your Nevada license, drive over to California and do horrible things. That's like, it's that easy. That is a problem that no one in tech... No one in no one in my feed wants to really discuss because that would involve discussing the fact that states are polarized based on their politics. And also there is no good solution beyond straight up ripping the entire thing up and starting again, which will never happen ever. They yeah, you know, I, I I you know, I, I really do not know a lot about the, the, the gun control issue. I don't know a lot about gun purchases, uh but, uh, yeah, that said, uh, I have some familiarity with it, some familiarity with the databases. And, yeah, no, what you, what you just said about, uh, you know, your, your friend going, I, I wouldn't even begin to think about buying a gun. Well, okay, then what, what, why are you even talking about fucking policy when you don't know the first thing about it? Hey, uh, I think we should invade Iran. Okay, um, that's a that's a pretty extreme policy. Where Where should we go in? I mean... They can cut off the Strait of Hormez. Strait of Hormez, I don't know what the fuck that is. I hate Iran so much, I don't even know where any of the places in it are. <laughs> okay, thank you. But where, Where is it on a map? Yeah. <laughs> I hate... You know, you think I would find that piece of shit on a map? Fuck that place! Disgusting, I, I hate it's it. It's in Europe. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, un- it's underneath the North Pole. It's where they build their <laughs> news. Was- and that and and it's and it's known as the irony state because it's actually in a very cold place, but it's hot. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, Iran has some very scenic mountains that uh, see snow-capped hills. That's that's actually news to me. That proof that I have not been to Iran or the Middle East. I would like to go to Iran someday. I do not think I should go now, but uh, hey, maybe someday. I. It's one of those places where, you know what, I'd love to see it, but I'm a bit scared. And I don't think that's unreasonable. Hey, the uh, the fucking, the moderate coalition is killing it in the elections. Yay. Can we go one? Let's let's go one day. Back to gun control. Yeah. Back to gun control. <laughs> no, it's, but there's one of my favorite moments in Twitter is when you get the joke men. Or you get just no, normal people who aren't the endless conspicuous joke Nazis who go out there and they're like, all right, no jokes today, Jesus Christ. All right? None. I'm I'm moderating this. And it's great watching the joke people do this as well because it's they, they go to war with each other. It's like, like you said earlier, there's definitely, they're all chomping at the bit to making some sort of joke and they all desperately want to and someone always does. 
go a little bit too far with a joke on the day. And everyone's like, oh, this is despicable. I can't believe this. 5,000 retweets this has got at this point. But they're all in the back of their heads thinking, oh, I should have made my... It's like, it's actually... Good. They should. They probably wanted to make some sort of drill joke where it's like, ah, guns are actually good and so is terrorism. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remove it. Ha ha ha. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, one day we may figure out the gun thing. One day we may apply a, uh, a combination of... Uh, economic reforms targeting high gun violence areas uh address systematic racism that uh holds people back uh turns certain neighborhoods into war zones like you see in chicago we may uh institute better background checks in some states that lack them we may address pipelines of guns that go from gun-free states to more restrictive states and uh we may even have a cultural change that addresses the uh the problems of mass shootings, et cetera, et cetera. The things that will spur these changes are not the people who throw up their hands and call it all disgusting. And it certainly won't be people doing fucking tweet storms. Jeet here, Heat Jeer, I can't remember his fucking name, but he always is like one of 328. Well, well here's what I think about the guy. And he sound. I, I, I will, I never want to hear this guy's voice because I really, I just want to imagine, well, what do I think? It, I, he has to speak like that. He speaks like Mr. Bean to me. I read every tweet he makes in the Mr. Bean voice. And, but everyone does them. And, ev- <laughs> and people, people with no authority to do so. And I, all right, I take that back because the idea of someone having authority to speak on a subject is vaguely eugenics based. So I don't like that. But it's, it's just the people who are just completely out of there. Out, out of their area. I would not, for example, I would not purport to be an expert on this election. I can't even vote. I'm a permanent legal resident. I cannot vote. I do not have one. Would you Would you like mine? Sure. De- wait, that's illegal. Oh, shit. But, Sorry. I'm trying right. to remove it. We'll, we'll edit the crimes out of the podcast. But the, the problem is, I will occasionally be like, oh yeah, this looks bad. Ah, oh, this is good. But I try and stay away from it. But there are people, going back to video game, but there are several video game developers who love to go on their flipping tweet storms about, oh, well, here we go. Here's the thing that I have to say about Bernie flipping Sanders. And here's what I have to say about Hillary Clinton. And I remember the thing that I brought up earlier that I saw a lot of people talking about, and I follow political writers as well, but I saw everyone talking about it. It's like, I don't even know what people were talking about when it came to the violence against Trump supporters, but I do know that everyone was talking about it in an incoherent and deeply confusing way that I wasn't sure which side really was saying anything, but I saw everyone from PR people to game developers to game writers to entertainment writers talking about it was the, just it was quoting Christopher Hayes saying that violence is bad in politics, or it was straight up like Quoting that and saying, yeah, I agree. Or quoting that and saying, no, you're an idiot. And it's, I know this must be a complex issue. It is. I mean, uh, okay, well, what if, what if uh, these same people been saying for the past year, Donald Trump is a fascist? Who is the target of, if you allow that Donald Trump is a fascist, uh, and you add in the ethnic siege mentality, who are the uh, attacking hordes in his siege mentality that would be also bear the full brunt of his abuse should he come into power. It would be Latinos and it would be uh, it would be uh, Arabs and Muslims. Uh, okay, uh, shit. Uh, what what do you do when you you are facing that fascism as these people sold for retweets and uh, likes and people saying, "Wow, really great point." You 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 fight back about uh, against it. Now, look, you can agree or disagree or not if it's a, a, a acceptable to assault. Uh, you know, to, to get into a physical altercation with a Trump supporter. That said, I know a lot of people who were in that area. They said that, like, the Trump supporters were saying some really fucking vile, violent shit to people, uh, taunting them physically, phys- trying to physically intimidate them. And without a moral judgment coming from me i will say this is the sort of thing that happens when those things come to play and there's a history history of racial animus that predates that exact event that you're in yeah for these people to just blindly fucking say like no it's great or uh even worse be like 
fucking animals, fucking scum, these supposed liberal people, because they're so liberal and so against violence that they want all the people locked up in a cage for years. Uh, yeah, it just it belies a lack of understanding of the immediate moment. And even fucking Hayes to be like, violence is never okay. Gee, you fucking think, man? Yeah, no fucking shit, dude. But uh, there are contexts to events happening. But hey, you know what? Uh, you, you go on TV and talk for a living. You, you get to make brave moral stands like you're a fave star joke, man. And in the in the case of Hayes, I wish... And I admit, talking to you here, this is the first time I've had a clear answer as to, well, what actually happened, why it is an issue. Because a lot of these articles did not break down who was doing the violence, how the violence began. A lot of them were just like, violence happened and cops were there. And in the same way, this is why... By the way, Twitter for your news is the worst possible oh, thing ever. Oh, it's the worst way to digest it. <laughs> no fucking question. And there are companies like Nuzzle, I think they're called, which just collate all the news that you would get through your Twitter feed and your Facebook feed into a newsletter. So it's like they've compounded the problem into an even worse cluster shit farm. I don't know what that means, but it's bad. And it's amazing how completely devoid of any discussion. And there are people I really, really like who are on the other side saying the vi- Borderline saying the violence was good by their own words. There was nobody, nobody I saw discussing it who was like, all right, I wish they wouldn't have hit anyone, but it sounds like they were antagonized. I wish it wasn't, I wish this wasn't the case. I wish bad things weren't happening. But if you look, there was probably, there was no one having even a tweet storm about it. I didn't even see a tweet storm. It's as if people did not want to have a civilized debate about it. They just wanted to be like, violence is bad, and violence is what the Trump people do, so it's bad. Versus, all right, maybe there are conditions here that are, and this is not a political podcast, but still, if you get your news from Twitter, this is what you see. You see these elaborately polarized things which just, they, they actually detract from your knowledge of the universe. It actively makes you a dumber person because you, you, you go on there and you go, um, all right, I guess I'm with uh, this group of people yelling or this other group uh, who got more retweets. You, 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 you go into battle and you're like, uh, I am the, of the Hayes faction or uh, I am of the yelling at Hayes faction. It's, uh, I can't think of, I can't think of a, something that would make you, make you dumber and trying to get to digest all this through Twitter. And hey, at the end of the day, all these people are going to fucking forget about this in a week. It'll be on to the next thing. And talking about shit, I think it's time to bring in the shit of the week. Ooh. I, shall I go first? As mine is, as usual, an object because I'm a consumerist bastard. All right. So, so this is not just hating on the object. It's hating on those that covered it in the press. And some of them are my friends. And I feel bad for them. But they are enabling a company that I think probably won't ever do it. That is, of course, the San Francisco-based startup Foldimate, which is selling... Well, they're not even selling it. And this is where the problem is. A machine that will actually do your laundry for you. It's between 700 and 850 bucks of this thing. And you can fold. It takes the robot 10 seconds to fold an additional... And then an additional 20 to 30 seconds to de-wrinkle each item. But it can hold 20 pieces of clothing at each time. All right, look. First of all, just what? 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 Excuse me. So you clip in your stuff, and you can only clip in T-shirts and shirts, and it will fold them and then de-wrinkle them. But they'll still be folded, so it will add wrinkles as well. Just, just so we're clear. You will have extra wrinkles. You'll have a three-foot-high robot on your house that will fold your clothes for you. But also, this is another example to me of my problem with Silicon Valley, that they don't know how to be rich properly. They just don't know how. 700 to 850. If you can afford a thing specifically for laundry, you know what you can also afford? A goddamn maid. Just get a maid. Get someone. Give someone a job. I'm not even going to go into the vacuous thing about robots taking our jobs. Because if this robot can take a job from someone, that person would shit at their job anyway. God, I never thought doing laundry was that hard. It's like a fucking three-hour process at most. I guess uh, three three twenty if you if you want to fold them, you want to be fancy. This is what you do when you have unlimited resources. Yeah, I I don't understand it. And this we discussed you and I about the idea that. 
Silicon Valley people don't know how to spend their money properly. If you can afford this, you can definitely afford someone to come into your home once once a week, clean it, and do this for you. Also, you clearly don't know how to... But if you can afford this, you can definitely afford a house or a place with a closet, which means you definitely want to hang up your clothes, and you're going to have to iron them anyway because this is going to wrinkle them. It's just... But then it gets worse, and what really annoys me is all of the people writing about this, or at least a large chunk of them, have at some point complained about vacuous Kickstarters and Indiegogos that never happen. This thing is going to be available for pre-order in 2017, with the first shipments in 2018. Hey, you, you really have to wait on the things that matter in life sometimes. Sometimes patience <laughs> pays off. Hey, fuck though, for that money, you could just wear your clothes one day. Throw them into a pile on the floor, lay them on fire, and buy exact copies. It's probably cheaper to do that. <laughs> and and I have so many questions that no one no one wants to answer. There's actually a competitor as well that already exists called Laundroid, but I actually like them because it's a Japanese company and they showed it off at CES and their site's full of English and I really enjoy just English in general. And also that that one makes more sense because you just throw your shit in a box and it magically folds everything. Also. The thing that really gets my go, the ultimate thing here, and Laundroid was not the case with this one. They had a working prototype at CES. This thing, this magical thing that people are definitely, is definitely going to scam so many people because there is no video of this thing in existence. There is a render, there is a clear render that is on every single story of this with with the generic ding, 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 ding music that every single starter video has. And... It doesn't exist. The thing doesn't exist. Just for that price and for what it's doing, it has machinery throughout it. This thing's never going to ship. This dude is, he's an Israeli founder. He's, I looked through some presentations. There's something really dodgy going on here and people have fallen for it. They've fallen for it so hard. The same people who decry all of these startups that send them nonsense. The folder mate is just it's a garbage idea. And also, if you can afford this, you could probably afford any number of startups that will come and get your laundry or just go to a goddamn wash and fold. They're everywhere. If you're in New York, I think there's more of them than people. They, one of those places, did lose my only pair of compression pants. Then, then burn them all Fuck down. Fuck them. To- but do you know how good... I mean, okay, they really didn't do anything, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like uh, I felt like solid sta- snake when I wore them, and now I don't have them anymore. And yeah, you could say they're only you got a cheap pair; they're only twenty dollars. You can go to any Target and get another pair. Fuck you if you say that you're you're erasing what happened to me. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, the, don't don't laugh at my tragedy. All right, it's just it's disgusting. But it's great though. This is just, this this startup, and just, I'm just gonna go to Google News and I'm gonna type in its name because it's everyone covered it. And these are the same people who were like, who, and you've got various places like Glamour, you've got, you've got other places like the New York Post, who, they're just consumer places. Then you've got outlets I really respect, like, like, you've got someone from Gizmodo writing about it. And this is someone who doesn't appear to be mentioning the fact that there's very clearly no actual prototype and that is something that this is a the the shit of the week is really just the fact that this keeps happening that they are that they are occasionally covering these things which will get clicks and it is a click related thing i think with devoid of criticism yet they will rip apart certain things for not having a prototype is it because they'll get clicks? I don't know, but it's just frustrating and insulting to everyone making a real product when you see these garbage men selling these garbage things, and or they'll eventually be selling them. And also, whoever did the PR for this, if they did the PR, you're a bunch of idiots. You really are a strategically stupid group. All that this is doing is getting you newsletter signups, you dildos. All that's going to happen is a bunch of people are going to be on a mailing list. Christ almighty. You, the folder mate, wasted their money. 
And they'll probably now get all sorts of emails which they'll claim, oh yeah, well, actually we've got a distributor emailing us. Fuck no, those people aren't going to give you cash for a second before they see an actual thing. Ugh, there we are, I'm done. I'm done with it. Fucking laundry bot. Um, when can I get one? Never. It's never, ever, ever going to exist. This thing is never going I'm, to come gonna get one. out of... It. You're, you're going to get two. You're going to get two, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, that brings up something. I mean, your wife could probably afford it. And I wanted to bring this We're up. We're having I'm really some problems. Sorry. We are having some problems. Well, two things. One, got another check. It did bounce. It was from Iran. And Theranos was actually Theranos. Um, two E's. Okay. I, Let me defend my wife here. Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos, yes. Look... Um, there is no proper way to put, you know, Roman letters. There is no proper way to do it, to translate it from Farsi. Yes, we used a bank. She, my wife, used a bank in Iran. And, like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be so eager to cash the check the day you get it. Well, as everyone knows, and thank you, Theranos, uh, one small prick, and you'll have... Your blood results whenever you need them, wherever you are. Sponsored by Theranos, the scumbag podcast. It is worrying that the check for the second time hasn't cashed, though. You really should ask her. Also, I did see her holding hands with her gym trainer. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I noticed that a lot of people like to comment on our marriage. Elizabeth, be- lifelong innovator, has found that the best way to spur her muscle recovery is when she actually physically holds hands with the trainer because this activates the branch chain amino acids that go into the the, the, the protein matrix, the part of the body, the protein matrix, and they oh. make her more muscular and she's stronger than ever. She's stronger than ever. Well, well, I'm so glad she's our sponsor, though. But, you know, what is your shit of the week, though? Oh, what? I have a I have a sad one this week. I've been talking about him oh. all week. I had to do radio about him. I uh, had to write an article about him. I just talked about him on the uh, Chapo bonus episode. But uh, oh, Kimbo Slice dying. I wish I had a funny yeah. funny uh, thing this week, but uh, it's been a grim week. And hey, fuck man, Kimbo Slice. Kimbo Slice was he was the first YouTube star. YouTube stars yeah. are they're usually supposed to be a telegenic sort of Mormon looking teen. Being like, hey, I'm I'm Zabber Glungil. Here's <laughs> here's my prank where I call my brother the N word. But Kimbo was he did it because of shit he did. He would go to backyards and he beat the shit out of people, and this made him a star. And I've watched MMA since 2003, since I was 12, 13 years old. Years old, and no one no one hated Kimbo like MMA fans. They hated him because uh, one one sort of fucked up promotion built their entire company around promoting Kimbo and he wasn't a talented fighter and he would be the first to tell you that and he often said it. He often said that his ground game sucked and that he was old and he had bad knees. But he also wanted to make as much money possible for his family. But at the time, MMA fans were not forgiving because there were very talented fighters outside of big promotions and Kimbo was getting all this play. Kimbo crash the promotion he was in by losing and their own mismanagement really crashed them but uh he went on the ultimate fighter and competed with guys who were fucking far better than him and shouldn't even have to have compete on a reality show to get in the ufc but people saw the real guy they saw this uh sort of humble goofy dad type guy who would make barbecue for other fighters and uh he would you know he talk about his own deficiencies in MMA and work really hard even though he wasn't really that good and they, they, they can edit reality TV any way they want but if you, you talk to anyone who trained with him or knew him he was this guy even though he was marketed as big scary black man he was sort of marketed to America's racial animus and terror but uh, at the age of 42 Kimbo Slice is dead leaving behind six children he made a shitload of money in his MMA career I hope that his kids are okay, but like, yeah, fuck, it's, uh, I would be remiss not to talk about it when I can, because it's a fucking sad story. And actually, I believe it was The Ringer, who I actually pilloried last week for writing something bad, where I read a very good piece, because I was not familiar with Kimbo Slice on any level, and it really struck me, and there's a 
truly brutal video. One of, I think, his first videos where it's literally him in the in a backyard beating a man senseless. And then when the man tries to back off, Kimbo does not put down his fists. He just is so... He's full of this... It, 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 theatrical or not, he's full of this rage. And I rem- I've got to a point with the internet where... I almost look at it where anytime I see a famous thing, like the Chewbacca lady with the mask, I don't care. I assume that it's pre premeditated, it's organized by someone, or if it isn't organized, it's most certainly someone saying, okay, well, that's doing kind of well, and Coles is a partner, so whatever. But this Kimbo thing was so, it was horrifying, and definitely there are certain people who watched it for that kind of fetishization of the violent black man. But there was something scary and honest and this ringer piece actually put it very well where he they described it as very similar to the old trading of the faces of death videos oh yeah no fuck yeah and these were these were as real as you you could get they he was really going into backyards and fucking fighting people um it was it was a different world he came into that world from uh he worked for, well, actually until his death, he worked in a security capacity for Reality Kings, later part of the Bang Bus Empire. But uh, he he was the real article. Those were real street fights. That fight that you're talking about, it was the Big D fight. That's actually where he earned his name, Kimbo Slice, because he fucking cut the dude's eye open with the force of his punches. Um, Are we talking about the same one? Because my one was grainy video. Of him, and it looks like someone's just house. Oh, oh, you might be talking about the Sean Gannon fight. That is the only one where... This this wasn't like an official fight, though. This was just... It looked like maybe it was an organized fight, but it really did look like just some guys in the backyard and someone was filming it on their phone. And it's shot... it's, It's just shocking. I don't even know how to describe it. Oh, I think, uh... Maybe the Ray fight? I'm not sure. There were a lot of them. It was a while ago. But, uh, man, like, you know why people love those fights? One of the reasons people love them is they did the best thing, the best thing that the internet can do. And they, that is that they gave you a vision into a world that you're not part of and probably will never be part of. And it was, you thank God I don't want to be part of the South Florida fight world either. But it's, fucking cool to see and it gives you a a different look on things and i think that that this is one of those it's the the shit thing here is poor sod's dead and he's left behind children but i think there there is something there is something to be said for that his legend will not be it won't be just he won't be considered a violent thug there thankfully people are reporting that he was on some level a family man and the endless worthless definitely want them to suffer people will say oh yeah that's just an excuse for another violent hoodlum and it's just like shut up christ the guy fought and there was something in that specific video you could see there was an anger in him and that's what made him fight to some extent and i it it's just it's amazing what the internet can show you, for better or for worse. Yeah, and I mean, to call him like a violent thug when he's fighting people who have... It's consensual violence. It's two parties agreeing to something. That doesn't fucking... Yeah, the only reason that someone would call him a thug or something like that is purely racialized. But it was... And it's exactly what the internet's for. To see this type of fucking outstanding ultra-violence that you, you, you really couldn't see if you lived in... Uh, some place like North Dakota or something. It's a view into a part into a world that you're not par- normally a party to. Yeah, and I think that that's that's a good place for us to wrap up because we've talked about the absolute worst of the internet and ended on someone who, well, perhaps his life was not perfect, but Gembo Slice did actually he was actually from every report I've read a fairly decent bloke. He was a yeah, he was a great guy and. God, it's a fucking shame that he died at the age that he did, but because of the dumb, shitty internet, he uh, he made some money for his family. That's that's pretty cool. Glad the internet did something good for once. Yeah. Well, that let's call it for the scumbag this week. I've been Ed Zetron. I've been Felix Biederman. Thank you so much. Please subscribe on iTunes. 
Please, please do this so we can get a new sponsor. We desperately need one. But thank you for listening. Goodbye, everybody.